Shop tour. 2019. Summer 2019. Yep. Yep. <laughs> So we are, the house is listed for sale. We're about to sell it. We finished up our last couple projects and we're about to start packing everything up. So we just thought we'd do a shop tour. One last one of this shop. As long as it's super clean, you might as well show everybody what it looks like because there's not sawdust everywhere and scrap wood laying all over the tables, so. And plus we just kind of want to see it for our own records. You know, in a couple of years, yeah. it'll be cool to look at this video again. And yeah, just see where we started. See what we did. So we're gonna do this vlog style, uh, follow along. And then we're also going to do a Q and A. So we posted a story on Instagram asking for shop questions and people responded. Hi guys, so we haven't posted in kind of a long time because we've been cleaning and getting our house sold, but our garage looks really stinking clean right now. So we're gonna do a shop tour. And at the same time, we're gonna be filming it and answering some questions. So put your questions right here in this little box and we'll answer them as we go. Let's go. It's important to note that we have absolutely zero sponsors. We don't take sponsors. We don't That's want right. tool sponsors. We'll take we'll take free tools, but we absolutely do not want tool sponsors. In case there's a better tool out there, I don't want to be tied to a particular brand and you know have a conflict of interest when there's a better tool that could do a job better so that's we why we don't just use what we like so yep so uh, we bought all these tools with our own money or our business's own mm -hmm. money so yeah i just felt the need to preface that we don't take sponsors so uh sorry for the crappy audio there's someone in our neighborhood woodworking while we're woodworking how dare they woodwork while we're trying to film our woodworking <laughs> uh, this is where it all starts this is lumber uh... storage this is the cart uh, designed by Bob from I Like to Make Stuff. I ripped off his design. Works pretty well. It's pretty great. We have a little handle on it. To we also have lumber storage top. up here for the nicer hardwoods. But this, it's really nice. You can store full sheets of plywood on the back. You can do cutoffs, scraps, all that sort of stuff. So that's wood storage. Uh, then right here is the miter saw station that we built. We got a video on that. We'll link. So anytime that we mention a project or a video or something, we're gonna put a card up there so you can take a look at that video. Also at the end of the video, I think you can just click up there and it'll show you a whole playlist of all of the things that we linked in the thing so you can watch it. Yeah, so that's a new feature I didn't know about. Miter saw, that was one of the first tools that we bought. Also the drill press, that was another one of the first tools that we bought. We actually bought the drill press before the miter saw. We just used to use the drill press, the circular saw, I think that was it. And fun fact, we really wanted to make some salt and pepper shakers for Christmas for people. And we're like, how do we make the hole in the salt and pepper shakers? And we're like, let's get a drill press and we'll just have it from there on out. So yeah. anyway, it was kind of one purpose, but. <laughs> uh, this doesn't get used a whole lot anymore. It's nice for sanding and some other things, but this little cyclone stack is really just kind of an auxiliary because we get the bigger dust collecting. You probably want to know more about the tools. So this is a rigid 10 inch miter saw. Uh, also, down underneath the miter saw, we store circular saw and nails, uh, pin nailer, Ryobi, uh, battery powered 18 gauge nailer. Um, really like that airless nailer. It's, it's really convenient and easy to use. Also, there's a really old sprayer under there. I don't use this storage as much as I used to. Also, down here is where we store the track saw, which has been just an invaluable upgrade. Um, yeah, I would venture to say, because I used to want a sliding compound miter saw, but now that we've got this nice track saw, just kind of, I don't know, makes it sort of pointless because um, the track saw is just so easy to use. It's not worth buying a new tool just, you know, because the track saw accomplishes the same thing in almost the same amount of time. So we might upgrade though, who knows. If I haven't decided what I'm keeping and what we're taking with, or what we're getting rid of and what we're taking with us in the move. So we may just start all over from scratch, who knows. All right. Question time. So taking a look at Instagram for some questions. First, First off, one. thanks for responding with some questions. You yeah, guys like, are awesome. Yeah, go follow us on Instagram mm. if you wanna be a part of stuff like this. So favorite tool, what's your favorite tool? Ooh, so I think we've discussed this in the past over a couple of Instagram lives. This is a question we get a lot, but right now I think our favorite tool is the track saw. Like we said, it would just mind blown at how much more we can do and how much faster we can do things. The precise cuts that we get on entire sheets of plywood has been Amazing. It is way better than trying to bust out the circular saw and do it. Or doing it by yourself on a table saw, which is not safe. Right. <laughs> All right, so here's our bandsaw. Honestly, we don't use this a whole lot, but when we need it, it comes in handy. So whether we are resawing boards and making them thinner or making reindeer during Christmas, that's 
what we use it for uh, a lot. Last year we made some bandsaw reindeer, that was really fun. It's a 14 inch Craftsman bandsaw, um, and we've also got it on some casters so it's easy to move around. Because honestly, when we've rearranged our shop to make it more efficient, this was probably one of the number one things we moved around. We're like, oh, well, we'll put the bandsaw in the corner or something like that. And we try to put the majority of our stuff on wheels just so we can reorganize whenever we want. All right, and this is our dust collector. This is a Harbor Freight two horsepower dust collector. It's the one that you get for like 200 bucks. Um, we did replace the bag on top and basically it just helps get the finer dust out of the air. Uh, yeah. And this is our big bad air compressor. We bought it after we had a tiny little baby one and got sick of it leaking all the time. So we're like, you know what? We're finally gonna invest the money. And the motor died. Well, yeah, and the motor died. But before that it leaked and it was a pain in the butt. Anyway, this is a Husky air compressor. It goes all the way up to 250 PSI. So basically we can use it on just about anything, including car tires. So it was a really efficient and convenient buy. And this is just a little makeshift hose reel. So we didn't have anywhere to put the hose and we didn't want it laying all over the shop. So we literally just built this out of some plywood and customized it to the size we wanted, wrapped the hose all up in there, and then we just hang whatever tip we're using at the time. It's really inconvenient and it's not that great, but. It's better than the hose lying all around the floor, so. Most of the tools, <laughs> most of the tools we bought with our own money before we started the business. So mm -hmm. it's only recently that we bought the really nice finish sprayer, the CNC, the nicer table saw. This was all mostly the stuff that we bought when it was still our money out of our yeah. pockets and we weren't making any profit. So that's why some stuff is kind of janky. But one of the things we're looking forward to in the new space when we move down south is that we're gonna get nicer stuff, equipment, industrial grade, because we're actually gonna be running this thing as a business. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's not worth the, it's not worth the time you're gonna lose in man hours to fight with a janky hose reel. It's, you're gonna save money just to buy the $50 retractable hose and never think about it ever again. Yeah. So. Next question. Opinion on drawers. So there's a pretty, that's a pretty heated topic, honestly, of, so funny. you know, Adam Savage, I think is famous for saying drawers are where tools go to die. Um, and some people love drawers. They get the nice Kaizen foam and they have a perfect little cutout. Yeah, it, I feel like it tool. depends on your personality type. If you were an organizer and you like a place for everything and everything in its place, I'd say drawers are for you. But for people who are like, ah, I couldn't care less. Let me grab it now. I need it now. You're gonna be like, hate drawers. Tool walls all the way, so. We both, we're both not planners. We, we've learned to plan, but that's been really hard. Just, you know, conquering that as a skill. So, um, yeah, I, we, we like the idea of drawers. I don't think they're terrible, but I'd much rather have open storage like a tool wall or, you know, something like that. If, if there's drawers, I want everything to be like one layer deep. I don't want a drawer yeah. packed full of stuff where I'm like digging around and everything. So I don't know that I'd go quite so far as to put Kaizen foam and cut out each individual yeah. tool. That just makes me want to pull my yeah, hair out thinking like, about it. Oh, give me chills. Ew. Ugh. But <laughs> uh, maybe that anti-skid mat or something you can put <laughs> in like kitchen drawers. Sometimes people do that for utensils and then have everything laid in the drawer. That would probably be okay. But, but yeah, I don't mind drawers as especially now because we do have to turn around and sell this house to somebody else. It's got to look neat and organized and somebody else might come into this garage and not ever do a lick of woodworking, but they still need a set of cabinets that's going to be convenient for whatever they do if they work on so cars or whatever. So we can't put drawers everywhere. So yeah, it's anyway. kind of working with that aspect. Official opinion on drawers? Meh. They're okay. Okay, and this is our everything finishing shelf. We literally built this because we were sick of having paint everywhere. So we've got paints, paint thinner, stains, Danish oil, you name it. We've got it all up here, waxes. This is our paint sprayer. This is something that we invested a decent amount of money in once we started um, getting a good profit from our builds for our business. So this is the Fuji Spray Mini Mite 4 Platinum. We absolutely love it. We love it. We use it for paint. We use it for finish. It goes on great. It was an awesome investment. Super happy we did it. Um, but yeah. Pretty that was one of the first business purchases we made because we knew the finish was the first thing the clients touched. Uh, this is the welder that my dad gave us. Uh, it's an old, old, old Craftsman welder. It runs on 220. It's just a stick electrode welder. Nothing super fancy about it, but it definitely opens up a new realm of possibilities for us to do metalworking and stuff in some of our furniture, which is Honestly, a really good skill to have. I welded a lot when I was a little kid, like 10 to 12 years old. Didn't weld at all for like 10 years, and now I'm getting back into it. So it was a lot of fun, but uh, yeah, it's really helped us 
take our projects up to the next level. Our kitchen table and the bench that we built for it, it had a metal base and uh, just learning how to get back into welding is really going to help us when we start trying to do pitches for restaurant builds, for golf courses, for, you know, your higher income uh, sort of clients also. Yeah, Jenny even kind of started to learn to weld too right at the end, so that was a lot of fun. Clamp wall. Uh, yeah, just been buying any and every kind of clamp we can find just to see which ones we like. Uh, I think we've settled in on these Bessie clamps. Again, we don't have sponsors, but these Bessie clamps I think are the best ones. I haven't tried the nice Harbor Freight ones that are supposed to be really cheap, but I think once we start doing production stuff, we're just gonna go and buy a ton of all the clamps that we use the most. So probably a ton of these, uh, the squeeze clamps. I like the DeWalt ones better than the Irwin ones. I just feel like they're stronger. And uh, pipe clamps. <laughs> and pipe clamps we need to buy a whole lot more of. Pipe clamps are one of those things that, that's the choke point for a lot of production furniture. And you never wanna let like a $20, $30 pair of clamps stand in the way of getting a project done much faster. So if you can save two or three hours of labor, that's upwards of $200 worth of clamps that you can buy because it's gonna save you that much time and labor. So start thinking about just buying clamps. Every time you go to the store, pick up a couple clamps. This is our air cleaner cart. Uh, my dad helped me build this. Just got an old furnace filter in there, or furnace uh, blower in there. For, like my dad went to a heating and air conditioning company and just asked to, to get one. And uh, you can do the same thing, but the, the guy in my hometown really didn't want to give my dad this motor. He was, I guess he was afraid he was gonna like, I don't know, wire it wrong or something. But once my dad explained that it was for an air, air filter cart for woodworking, the guy was like, okay, fine. I guess you know what you're doing. But that's a great option. You can usually get these for free from any heating and air conditioning company that installs new ones. They just pitch these in the dumpster. So that's a really cool way to get it. Lots of scrap wood. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of scrap wood. This whole thing, just the motor is all bolted into this piece of birch plywood. So if I can scrap the rest of it, which I probably will, and just keep the motor and electric timer switch right down here. So I can turn the timer on and let it go for a couple of hours. Uh, and it'll clean the air in the shop while I'm not there and then turn off later. What do you wish you could add to the shop? What do you wish, yeah, what do you wish you could add to the shop? Um, first off, I would wish for unlimited wishes because I feel like that's the only way that you're finally gonna get everything you that's want the in only, your shop. That's the only <laughs> correct answer yes. to a what, what do you wish for question. Yeah, unlimited, unlimited wishes. Unlimited wishes, right? That's like cheating the system, but whatever. Because on the off chance that that's an allowed rule, then you have whatever you want. You win. So anyway, boiling it down to one wish, if you had one thing. One thing that I could add to the shop, I think it would have been to actually make the shop heated. Install some sort that's of climate control, say. heating, cooling. Oh my gosh, it's like we're in a business together or something. We looked at it, we actually had a guy come out and give us a quote for a uh, just a, a natural gas mm -hmm. heater to hang up in this corner right here. Um, it was gonna be about three to $4,000 to run all the gas pipe and everything and the exhaust and everything. Uh, mini split would have been even more expensive, plus the electric bill would go through the roof. Um, so for the amount of time that we are here, we have been living here, it wasn't worth it for us If we were staying here another three to five years with exactly. our jobs, we probably would, but we're moving down south and we're never gonna see that money back, even yeah. out of the house. So right. even though it made sense from a business perspective, it didn't make sense for us as homeowners. Mm -hmm. But that's not a mistake we're gonna make again. Probably the very first thing that we're gonna do when we get down to the new place, before we even unpack the shop, is we're gonna hire an electrician to put electricity, mm -hmm. like every six feet, um, and then we're gonna have somebody come in and put a mini split. Yes. So. so. Yep. Not practical for here, but that's definitely what I wish we could have added to this place. Okay, and this is our tool wall. We have an entire video about this where we talk about it and walk you through building it and all that good stuff. Um, so go check that out. But otherwise, this is really easy because we can just grab whatever we need. It is here immediately. We walk up to the wall, grab it, it has a place. We can put it back exactly in its place. It stays organized. And yeah, we love it. All right, so underneath the tool wall right here, we have a tiny little area. I kind of envision this to be like the small working area. Uh, it doesn't work that well for filming because you'd either have to film over my shoulder because I can't put a camera. I guess I could do like an overhead rig, but it just doesn't work the way that I thought it would. So it would be convenient if I wasn't filming. So we probably won't include anything like this, but it's got a cutting, self-healing cutting mat. Um, this is where I'd imagine like restoring hand tools and tweaking things. 
sharpening uh, chisels and planes, but again, I just don't use it like this because usually I'm filming. So I normally do things on the workbench, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, over here is our CNC. It was in our guest bedroom, but since we're showing the house, uh, we don't really want to have one of our robots. People don't exactly get the concept of having an X carve in a guest bedroom and dedicating the whole room to it. I totally get it. Because Priorities. Why wouldn't you dedicate an entire bedroom to an X carve? But. <laughs> Fine. Anyway, so it's just chilling out here for the moment. We don't use it like this. If we need to use it, we set it on the ground so it's flat and level and not sagging off the, the cabinet, but that's about it. Um, the rest of the garage, we do keep our cars in here, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. One of the questions on Instagram was about that, which I think we'll answer right now. This is the reminder for you to edit it in the video. All right, next question. Do you keep your cars in your shop slash garage? And the answer to that is yes. The winters are so harsh up here. We're in North Dakota. Like the winters up here are just miserable. We're talking several feet of snow every year on average and below, like regularly, not wind chill. Ambient temperature is what, like It can get down below. to like minus 30. Yeah. It's insane. So for the sake of our cars and not having to spend a ton of money on them to fix them up after every winter, we have no choice but to put them in the garage to Plus, keep them safe. <laughs> our, like our jobs are pretty time critical. We go into work, but not a lot of other people do. And so we have to be able to get into our cars. The doors can't be frozen shut. Yeah. We can't waste two hours trying to scrape it clean. We just need to get in the car and go. So. Yeah. It's been kind of tough, especially when we have bigger projects that we're trying to finish and we have to shut everything against the wall, but we just keep everything mobile. And I think that's something that we're yeah. gonna to continue to do because you never know when you've got an order for 30 kitchen tables for a restaurant or something like that. And you're just gonna to need to push some tools to the wall because you're not using them for that project. So I really like the idea of keeping everything on wheels, keeping it mobile so that you can just pick and choose. Ben Ueda on the Modern Maker podcast has mentioned several times. He talks about just wanting a rolling cart where when you're building something, you put all the tools you need to build that thing on the cart and everything else stays stored and it's to tools or chest up against the wall. Hmm. So when we're doing production line okay. furniture, that's kind of how I see our shop evolving is we only have the tools out in the floor space that we're going to use on that project. Everything yeah. else will be up against the wall and, in storage. So that'll be cool. Cool. And then over here, just like house stuff, you know, just like stuff that's not woodworking related, lawnmower, snowblower, sports equipment, stuff like that. And then along that wall is just more yard tools. Anyway, I guess that's everything around the periphery. We could start going through <laughs> stuff in the middle. Oh, I didn't talk about these cabinets. We built these cabinets. Yay. Uh, they were not, they did not come with the house. They've been really nice. They, they keep dust off of a lot of our tools. It's mostly, you just want to go through each yeah, one. Sure. So the first one is like saw blades and stuff. Screws, got an extra drill. Um, yeah, trash bags, other um, bags to hold smaller tools. This is our sanding drawer, all our sanding These abrasives. Sanding just some drawer slides and then our whole saws. And then here's just kind of a junk drawer. Everybody's got one of those. Um, in here is a metal chop saw, abrasive chop saw, and then over here's some auto tools answer some questions. Like, where'd you get your amazing shirt, Jenny? I got my amazing shirt from Sam from DIY Huntress. Great question, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. All right, so this is our workbench. We actually harvested this from our original flip top workbench. So we thought we'd give this style a try, just like a traditional workbench to see if we liked it. It's good and we like it, but we don't do enough stuff on it that would require us to have an entire second table. Honestly, we'd rather have a second flip top table so that we could use it for you know two, three other purposes other than just one large wooden t table. Um, on the edge here, we do have our vise. So that's good, I guess. We can attach that to the other end, but you could also do that with a flip top table. So anyways, not bad. We like it. Um, we use it a lot for sanding. So we're, we're probably gonna build a second or sturdier version of this table once we get down south. Um, I've ordered some of Andy Klein's new uh, twin screw turbo vices. So we'll have to find a way to incorporate that into the design. I'm not too worried about it, but um, I much rather the modern style of like the flip top uh, plywood style instead of the traditional style workbench. We don't do a lot of hand tool work, so it doesn't really make sense for us to have a huge heavy workbench when we could just, when we really just need another assembly table. So speaking of which, our outfeed assembly table, uh, it's a double flip top design. Uh, again, just kind of another iteration on Mark from Gunflint Designs, uh, double flip top workbench. Um, we got our planer on one end. This is the DeWalt. I don't know the model number. 
It's the DeWalt lunchbox style plate. They only make one version of this. It's nice, but we definitely want something a little more powerful um, that can handle more like industrial uh, amounts of wood running through it. This one kind of overheats and it's not bad, but anyway. And then on the other side, we have our rigid oscillating belt and spindle sander. So it's really nice when we need to use it, but it stays out of the way mostly because it's the outfeed for the table saw. These are waxed, uh, mm -hmm. the, the plywood's waxed, so stuff coming off the table saw just glides right over it. And that's helped with convenience and speed, but also safety, to be completely honest, because when you push it out of the table saw, it slides all the way off, moves out of the way for you. You can push everything to the side really easily. Yeah, and to, uh, to get rid of the flip tops, the, the pipe is running through this way. So all you gotta do is put this away, flip it upside down, and then there's this board that screws on top, and that's your finished surface for the outfeed slash assembly table, and it's just put into the bench with four screws, one on each corner. So uh, pretty low tech, but it's a nice design. I think we're gonna keep it moving forward. What is the worst part about the shop you're in now? Okay, I have my answer. Do you have your answer? What's that? <laughs> it kind of goes along with the old answer. It's cold. Oh my gosh, it gets cold in here. And then your paint freezes. It gets to the point where you don't even want to come out here and build or film because it's just miserably cold. You have to turn our little gas heater on for probably an hour before it even gets to like above freezing and is tolerable. But yeah, that's fine. See, mine, <laughs> mine is not. Mine is the fact that, so we have, it's a three car garage, which is very nice, mm -hmm. but I can only use one wall. Even okay, if you have fair. a one car garage, you have two walls that you can, or two long walls that you can use. Mm -hmm. So I found myself constantly running out of wall space to store stuff. So I've got this wall back here, which is nice, but because of the cabinets, I made those way too big. I should have made them smaller, knowing that we were gonna do woodworking, but you know, hindsight's 2020. But I only had like one wall to put stuff up against and then kind of a half wall over here. So. I, I really would like sort of the shotgun style, just a one car garage. I think that would be better than having, you know, the square footage of the extra garage. I don't know. It'd be harder to do bigger stuff, but as far as tool storage and organization goes, it would have been easier to have a, just a one yeah. car garage that I could fill up totally. Okay, so this is our grizzly table saw. Uh, it's the second table saw that we've bought so far. We really like this one. And honestly, investing in this one was something we did when we realized we wanted to continue with our woodworking business and making money off of it. We knew that if we were gonna make the quality of furniture that we wanted to sell to people, we needed a table saw that would allow us to make really precise cuts. And the last one that we had didn't really allow us to do that. However, when we bought our first one, that was like our first step deciding that we wanted to, to do this as a business and to make, turn a profit and make money and start our YouTube channel. So actually our last table saw is, I mean, it had a lot of memories, I guess, so it was hard to get rid of it because that was our first stepping stone or our, our springboard that got us into this whole, this whole business thing. And that first one we bought was the rigid hybrid cabinet table saw. It worked well for us at the time, but we are definitely enjoying our upgrade. So this saw works great for us. Uh, once we hire employees and we start becoming more liable for their safety, we'll probably buy a couple of saw stops. I've actually been toying with the idea of having two table saws because I avoid using a dado stack because of how long it takes to set up and put in. So we might get a smaller job site saw that can take a dado stack just so we can have it in the corner off to the side, but at, the, at a moment's notice, it's ready to use. That way I can incorporate dados into more furniture styles, make it stronger, make it better, but not have to worry about wasting so much time swapping out a dado stack every time I wanna use uh, dados. So the shop itself has been really good to us. It's, mm -hmm. This is just the third bay of our three car garage. It's just been a roller coaster up and down of just the transition from going from just hobbyist to business mm -hmm. has been a huge improvement because there's there's purchases I have made that I would have never made as a hobbyist and there's things I've built as a hobbyist that I never would have wasted my time on as a business. So learning to transition the shop from one thing into another is something pretty crazy. And as far as I understand on YouTube, there's not a whole lot of people that have a shop purely dedicated to client only builds. 
Uh, it's mostly hobbyists or people that just really enjoy woodworking, not people that are trying to squeeze the last bit of efficiency out of a shop. Mm -hmm. So that'll be exciting moving forward with the channel just to see how our shop evolves and it gets yeah. gets laid out differently from other people just because we're trying to make a business instead of just enjoying woodworking in its purest form. We've got a couple of cutting boards to make and then we're pretty much done. We're gonna mm -hmm. start packing stuff up. Yeah. That way when we get an offer on the house, we can close quickly and yeah. just get Probably. out of here. We also don't know if we're buying a trailer or renting a trailer depends on how much stuff we have and so we got a whole lot of logistics to figure oh, yeah. out we're gonna take you along we're gonna have a video of tearing the shop down and packing it up and then mm -hmm. unpacking it obviously so we'll you know hopefully you'll learn some stuff from yeah. us of moving a shop if you've never done that before probably um, break a few things <laughs> we've still whatever. got we've still got videos coming out we we've been planning for this oh yeah so it's not gonna be you know a regular content pace but we we do have plenty of videos to yeah. carry us over through the summer um, so We'll be back to we your scheduled planning, programming. We did plan for that one. <laughs> so if you want to keep up with us in the move, you can follow us on Instagram. Again, the link is right here. Um, yeah, all of the cards and stuff should be linked in the description. If you can't figure out the buttons to click to find the playlist of everything that we have linked earlier. Uh, all the tools that we use, again, we're not sponsored, but we do have affiliate links for certain tools. Yeah. The only tools that we put affiliate links on are the ones that we would absolutely recommend to our mm -hmm. best friends. We also have programs for sale. If you want to learn how we you know, close deals and sell projects as a business, uh, we've had no problem finding customers. We've actually had the opposite problem. We've had too many people wanting things. So, so we've had to raise our prices to keep in uh, line with the demand. And so if, if you want to learn how we do that and establish those relationships, we have programs. Again, that's the first link in the description. If you're a woodworking business owner or if you make things and sell them and you're looking for a community of people to push you forward and help you grow and ask questions and get feedback and you know just throw something out to a group of other business owners and to get feedback on and advice, we have a private Facebook group called The Stud Stack. It's $29 a month. We're in there every single day. You post a question you get an answer from us just a couple of hours later. That's the fastest way to contact us if you want our opinion. We've also got other business owners in that group. It's just a great community of people in there just helping each other out. So, Yeah, um, and the people in there are awesome too. They're even fast to post videos. They'll be like, oh yeah, I, got, I know that. Throw on their phone, record, and post a video within like five minutes of you asking. The people in there are so awesome. So if you don't mind, it, Please take a look at that. This is just for you to help grow your business to the next level. So thanks so much for watching and uh, giving us some awesome questions to answer. We always have fun with those. Smash that like yeah. button. Yeah. Hit the notification. Oh gosh. Ring that bell so you get notified of all of our future videos. Ugh, the things I do for people on YouTube. Why did we not think of this earlier? I mean, what? We totally did. <laughs> all right. Thanks again for watching. Uh, yeah. Bye.